Well, it's Thursday. You know what that means. Let's torture something. Meet the Thermal Eye T2 Pro infrared camera that fits in your phone, has a zoomable lens and optional mounts. Let's put it together, see what it's like to use, see if it's any good, and come up with a few ideas as to how you could use it. Hey. First up, of course, let's check out what you get in the box. Sticker, another sticker, instructions, lens cleaning cloth, and the main event, the tiny little camera itself with a plug to go on your phone and a lens cap. Now that comes with, in this case, a bunch of accessories. And in these you get a handle, you get a mount to put your camera and your phone together, and an adapter cable to link the two. Now we're going to have to download an app and set up the phone, we'll find out how easy that is, and without any instructions we'll set this up and see if we can get it up and going and usable in a few minutes or less. All right, now this is the bit I edit out if it doesn't work. Um, I think that screws in there. Plug that in. Now let's see what happens. Sometimes these accessories will take you straight to the app store and you don't have to you don't have to get any permissions or anything you don't have to scan a qr code or anything and yes this is asking to send me straight to the app store so this is a very intelligent product it is taking me to the app right here that i need so i'm going to get that there's no purchase price for that so we do the usual Yes, Face ID and all the rest, and now we're downloading the app, and it looks like it's a reasonable sized app, which is probably a good thing. Like when you buy these things, you want them just to work, right? So there's no point waiting around for apps to load or having to read instructions or scan QR codes on boxes. Plug it in and it should just work. This is. Okay, it's downloaded. That was just under a minute. You've got to give it permission to access your camera because that's where it stores the images. It's actually using the camera and the phone to do all of the heavy lifting in terms of image wise. This is really just a lens. Now we take the cap off. A minute after plugging this thing in, I've got it up and running and it is using my phone as a thermal imaging camera on a stand and it's giving me my speed, it's giving me my compass bearing, it's giving me the angle of view and I've, I don't know if you can see here but I've got a range of selections that I can choose from to change the types of image that I see in the screen. Myself personally, I like pretty colours. Alright, let's take this outside, see what the resolution's like, see what the zoom function's like, and see if we can get this thing to perform for us. Now before you start using the camera, there's a couple of settings you should know about. So get into settings, you go to the hamburger button, and obviously I'm going to leave the temperature on Celsius if you're from the United States, you'll go to Fahrenheit most likely. The next thing we're going to do is turn off the logo. We don't want their logo appearing in all of our footage. Um, if you want to see temperature on the screen as you're recording, you can toggle the temperature on and that will give you the high and low in the picture. It'll give you two little crosshairs that show you high and low. I'm going to leave that off for now. Um, location device, if you don't want it recording the location, you can turn that off. The next thing that is really, really important is to do a right rotation 180. For some reason the camera comes set up so that when you go left it thinks you're going right and when you go right it thinks you're going left. Pressing the camera rotation 180 gets rid of that problem. All right, we're all set up now. The rest of the factory settings I'm going to leave alone. I'm going to get out of settings and start having some fun with this camera. Now the first thing I did was wait until dark. This is an infrared camera after all and I wanted to see how useful it would be if you were hunting or if you were looking for stock in your paddock. So I started out by having a look at some sheep that were about 80 meters away and I used the zoom function on the camera to get in closer to them and then I was able to focus the lens of the camera to get a reasonably accurate and reasonably sharp image. 
Next up, I walked through the paddock and I was able to distinguish a lot of features in the paddock that I couldn't make out with the naked eye because it was actually quite a dark night. There are only stars showing no moon. And I was able to get right up to the sheep before they realised that I was even there, it was so dark, and yet they stood out perfectly clearly. Makes me start to want a thermal scope on the gun, to be honest. Then I think I've identified where our rabbit problem is coming from. Have a look at these guys. Zooming in, I've got quite a clear shot of this rabbit. That would have been about 70 metres away at my estimation. That's not bad. Pretty good resolution, certainly enough to make out where to shine a spotlight or where to shine a thermal scope on your gun. Being a bit of a camera enthusiast, I kind of like having an infrared camera that I can plug into my phone to take really cool shots as well. So there is the recreational aspect to this, but there's also some really useful things that you can use this for around the farm. For example, you can check out your solar panels to see if any of them are behaving differently. If you're starting to notice that you're getting less charge in the batteries or feedback into the grid, you can also check out any electrical boxes and make sure that there are no shorts or sources of heat and you can do this periodically maybe with the change of seasons when you change the batteries in your smoke alarm that'll be a good way of checking out if there's been any problems with wiring that you need to get the electrician in for now let's talk about the accessory mounts that you get with this camera there's good and bad aspects the phone is mounted quite securely as is the camera uh, can't fault the two screws here but this little toggle in the centre here that rotates your phone, um, you actually, it comes apart really, really easily if, you, if it's knocked. And what you have to do is you have to tighten it up with the phone higher than you want and then pull down on the phone to complete the tightening. There's also, with the phone mount, I don't know if you can see that, a bit of a wobble in the mount. It just seems cheaply made and it's a shame because the rest of the package works just so well. So the verdict, would I get the infrared TC2? Yeah, I think I would. It's reasonably priced. It's literally plug and play. You plug it into your phone and your phone tells you what to do. The menu is reasonably easy to navigate and features that can get annoying like the temperature sensors can be toggled on and off for when you need them. I would definitely have the temperature sensor points for high and low turned on if you're looking at electrical switchboards or solar panels because this thing's gonna show you a difference of even half a degree. It's quite accurate. Having the little manual focus on the front was really good, particularly when I was using it outside at night. When I pinched and zoomed on the phone, I was able to get a very clear image quite quickly just by altering the focus. So I've been really impressed by the little TC2. If you're looking to up your mobile phone's capacity to infrared, whether that be as a tool or for more recreational activities, this is worth having a look at. Guys, if you like this kind of content, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, makes a huge difference. Plenty more like this on timthompson.ag, and I'll try out something like this next week.